horrible being Joe Biden. Did you see his response to the press yesterday? It was quite spectacular. Yes, as they say in this uh, famous song, learn to hate in the 80s. So it's not the 80s anymore. But we don't hate here on the Grudge World Life Show. He's a wonderful president. Okay, so we're here. And Zamba the Judge is here. It's episode 400, I don't know, 434. And it's uh, July 26, 2021. It says there at the corner of the screen. Otherwise, I would have no idea because every day seems like another day. Except we've got some cool things coming up here potentially on the Grow Tour Love Network, which broadcasts to you frequently from the Seventh floor of the Gratuar Life International Building of Trade. We're in room two, the theater room, where we're watching 1966 Thor cartoons, listening to 1980s punk rock, and uh, dreaming of the future of our uh, inspirational religious network. Um, we're still trying to, uh, Mort Todd said sometime this week, but I haven't been able to get in touch with him. But we've got a cool, amazing guest coming up. On Friday, about four o'clock Friday, four o'clock p.m. That is, so uh, that's something to look forward to, and we're going to have a roundtable discussion. Not this weekend, but the next. Uh, once everyone sees the Suicide Squad, to see what people thought of it, we'll discuss the Suicide Squad. That'll be next weekend. My friend Randy should be visiting at some point. Maybe this weekend. I don't know. He has to see. Um, but, yeah, we've got a special uh, guest coming up Friday, a really special guest. And I'll tell you, once we get more than two people in the uh, two people viewing, we'll, we'll wait till we have about 10 viewers, then I'll spring the surprise on you. Yeah, but in the meantime, let's see what's going on. Uh, let's see. Uh, Zombo the Judge says, I'm pretty sure you gave me your neck back kink thing, Gratu. Plus, I got the first poke. So fun, fun. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I solved it. I don't think I did. But I remembered there's a solution that uh, my uh, old friend of mine, his dad is a general. And, you know, they they been an airborne guy and everything. And he, and, and he had these ways that they got you know, dealt with their back because, you know, in combat, you can't go to a chiropractor. And apparently, if you take a tennis ball and uh, put and like put a towel around or a t-shirt around or something, and then you like put it on the floor and then you roll around the problem, you know, you, you let the tennis ball roll around uh, where you, you're, you're really hurting. And it's supposed to kind of do the same thing a chiropractor would do. So, anyway, um, 
Yeah, let's speculate on uh, important comic books that you should buy because movies and TV shows and cartoons are going to be made from them. That should be a fun thing to do. Let's see what uh, Huff House Art says. Just got a 1976 Famous Monsters, the film line in the mail, 125 King Kong on the cover. Yeah, I remember that issue. Uh, yeah, um, Forrest J. Ackerman was so disappointed by that movie. You know, I could, you know, as as everyone else was. Um, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Senator. Yes, thank you, Zumbo. Uh, let me get a box of comics in here and let's see which ones we can all uh, fool people into speculating on, shall we? Hold on. I will be right back. that Toys R Us time of year. Well, oh boy. Comic book boxes, not fun. You had a disaster, I don't know if you heard me shouting from the other room. When I have disasters, I tend to shout, shit, fuck, piss. I don't know where I got that. I think it's my old friend Ryan. I don't know, or did he get it from me? 
whenever there's a problem, we shout, shit, fuck, piss. Do you guys do that? Maybe it's a North Texas thing. Um, let me move down a little bit because... I was standing on Saturday night's amazing episode. It was a marathon episode. And, um, okay. Well, we have four people watching. It's Christmas in July. Consume, consume, consume. Yes. Absolutely. That's the Christmas spirit. Four humans watching. We've got Huff House Art and Zomba the Judge and two anonymous people. Probably don't want their bosses knowing they're watching. <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, so speculation. It's all the cool people are doing it, man. What shall we speculate on? Let's see what's in this box. See, this is helping me because I have to move all the Silver Age boxes from room three to room one. So the room one will have the Silver Age and back. And room three over here is going to have all the 1971-ish stuff and up. And uh, that way they won't cross-contaminate each other because... A Silver Age book should never be right next to a book from like 1985 or 86. It's like sacrilege. Let's see what you got. Meyer Greenblatt's uh, in the house, and Zombo says, Howdy, Meyer. Okay. Oh, I put the box backwards, man. Well, anyway, so you guys have helped me today move this box from one room to another. So you've done one good fuck, one good day today. <laughs> we'll see what comic books we got here. What funny books? <sighs> yes, indeed. Some of these need to be sealed with scotch tape. Do I have tape? Do I have tape? I need to get. Some, I need to find some scotch tape. I was just looking for some. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, um, I don't know if you've heard about this, but Netflix announced last Thursday that they're going to be doing a computer animated uh, cartoon series based on Flippity and Flop. And uh, this is a key issue that you need to seek out. It's already going way up on the, uh, the key finder, the app on your phone that, that idiots get to know what books to buy because they don't have any taste. Uh, it's the it's the introduction of Twiddle and Twaddle. Um, first appearance of Twiddle and Twaddle. It's a hot book. This is, uh, again, Flippity and Flop, number 19. And it's from the uh, JPN Pedigree Collection. J Joseph Philip uh, Netter was the owner of this. He's now a... One of he's the 80th richest man in the world. He's a billionaire, made his money in in, um, in oil, and uh, yeah, his comics are very uh, sought after. And so this is a pre-code issue, also. So that's very important. And uh, but this is when the code first came in. They put the code giant on the cover to let parents know that flippity and flop probably aren't going to have anal sex in this issue or something, although that cudgel could probably really do damage to a cat's skull. But then they're all new stories, but this one isn't a key issue, so you don't want to get that. You only want to buy key issues because the other issues don't matter, only the key issues, right? The key issues, oh, the light's not even on me, God damn it. Excuse my goddamn language. Uh... We've got six viewers now. Let's see. What the fuck? What the hell? Let's see. Meyer says, hi, Zombo. Then Zombo says, hello to Huff House also. Then Meyer says, 
twiddle and twaddle Netflix show coming this fall. Yes, so write that down. I hope you're taking notes or writing this on your wall in crayon. Because I'm giving you the scoop so you can be all, all in on the important Netflix and there's Amazon Prime and there's all these streaming channels. I think movies still play in theaters sometimes. Um, let's see. Oh, Basil's here. Let's see. Fresh killed rabbits, 59 cent a pound. Yeah, we may all be eating that shortly. I just stocked up on a little bit of water um, at the uh, at the supermarket. Uh, Zombo says, essential issues like essential workers, I am catching on now. Yes, but we're all non-essential. Therefore, we're watching the Gratu Orloff show at 1.10 p.m. on the, uh, the amazing Monday, July 26, 2021. Or you work out of your home, just in general. Let's see. Uh, anyway, so Friday at... 4 p.m. Uh, we should be going live with uh, Milton Knight, an amazing animator and artist. Um, and uh, he seems to be very much of a similar mind to mine as far as his taste. Um, oh, let, let's look at his website. Share. Don't worry, I'll show more key issues and more issues to uh, speculate on here in a moment. But I'm giving you a preview of Friday's show. Hopefully you guys can tune in. Why is Bing come up as my... I need to... It shouldn't be Bing. Oh, shit. Okay. I need to watch my language. Yes. Friends, my new blog is where you'll be seeing my future updates. I'm also on Facebook. So this is an old blog. Don't miss my animation on YouTube. Uncle Milty's Cartoon Cavalcade. Yeah, this is what we're looking at is over 10 years old. He worked on Sonic the Hedgehog. And Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat. Yeah, his artwork's great. Um, yeah, maybe we need to look at a more uh, current website. Um, that might be helpful. Okay, the world of night. Let's see his gallery of paintings, because he, he, he'll paint on commission. I, you know, they, I just heard on the radio the Hunter Biden's paintings are selling more for more than uh, uh, Picasso now. And, and of course, if you buy a Hunter Biden painting, it's anonymous, so foreign governments can donate. Ooh, I like that painting. That's so cool. Uh, Hmm. Okay, that's six hundred dollars for that. It's one hundred and fifty. Very mid-century looking. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that one's good. That's six hundred. <laughs> that's really good. Yeah, he paints with acrylic. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, 
he's got a Patreon or not, whatever you could kickstart or something where he's trying to um, raise money to finish a um, a um, an animated film. Remember these? These are the books he used to do. It's like uh, discovering art from the 1930s that you never knew about. Anyway, um, he should be coming on Friday about four. Um, oh, his YouTube channel is really good. You should subscribe because um, he has all kinds of old cartoons. Uh, look at his playlist. He's got all this uh, great music and uh, yeah. Um, All right, so uh, he's got mood music, uh, Seaberg music, like uh, like I, I, Meyer's been putting creating playlists of that. He's got the same stuff. Um, Show, don't tell. Every writer, oh, every designer, every please artist, shut up. So you need to check this page out and subscribe to it. He's got war cartoons between the wars. He's got animated ladies. Some of these, I don't even remember these playlists. Russian cartoons. Uh, my cartoons. Oh, let's look at his cartoons. So, And this was a cartoon he was trying to... to the, the Hi, my name is Milton Knight. I want to introduce you to my project, an animated cartoon titled... He, he's abandoned this project, but he says he learned a lot from it. But he's working on new things now, because uh, this is like 2009. I wish he had finished it, because it looks like it just looks amazing. Caprice, Teen of Tomorrow. Creating, writing, and drawing have been like life forces for me. I've been cartooning since the age of two. I started working professionally at age 16. I created illustration, comic books, record covers. And in 1991, I moved to the West Coast to work in animation. But because so many hands were at work on these films, and because most of it was said to be finished by people I would never meet, very little of my animation work ended up being truly what I wanted it to be. If I were to make a cartoon that was as well drawn and as funny as it should be, I would have to do it almost entirely on my own. Caprice is pretty much a one-man project. I wrote it, designed it, drew it, and painted it. It's exhilarating. It's a space fantasy, a blighted twist on the ideal future. What is this kind of future like for the lower middle class? Caprice lives the normal life with home and family during the day. But she slips off to live her real life at night. It's a happy hamburger ideal. From the bowels of a condemned planet, danger threatens. And Caprice, quite naturally, takes matters into her own hands. I've worked on Caprice between, after, and during other jobs, artistic and otherwise, for quite a few years. Some of the animation we're seeing is footage I managed to get finished that premiered at Asifa Hollywood's 2D Expo in 2004. 
it played to wild approval. This is what animation can do best when you land. Few words are needed. The tale is told with movement, expression, and color. Cartoon art can bring out what is felt inside. It's better than realism. It's reminiscent of the earthy animation of the 1930s and 40s. But everyone agrees that it's very modern, very original. It's very me, myself. Caprice is not yet finished, and several animation festivals have already asked me to show it. I certainly will when the job is done. I am hoping it will develop into further work, further filmmaking that will really take advantage of what graphic art and animation can do with today's technologies. Animation is, I feel, the ultimate art form. It comprises so many different disciplines, story, drawing, painting, music. We haven't even scratched the surface of what can be accomplished with drawn animation. If you're familiar with Kickstarter.com, you know that this is an all or nothing proposition. If I don't reach my financial goal of $10,000, I get nothing, you give nothing. But if your pledges help me to reach or surpass that goal, those funds will go to the art supplies needed to finish the paper animation, the computer work of getting it colored and filmed, sound and post-production. I'm offering a variety of rewards for your pledge whether it's one dollar or over a thousand, and every reward is fashioned to make you feel a part of the process. From getting on my list of email updates and previews, to screen credit, art from the finished film itself, and receiving an original canvas painting by myself. Whatever you can afford, it's important. Please pledge, and please help me to continue giving this project the best that I've got. Thank you. Yeah, Milton's saying that. I'm, I'm sorry, Zombo's saying that Milton could do audio books, and Zombo, Zombo Zombo said that, and Zombo says he has all he does all the right emphasis, and not always true for a lot of people. Yeah, he he sounds like if, um, like Darth Vader was a real friendly guy, <laughs> just like a real deep voice, just like but but like if he was like a real nice dad, you know. Um, this is an important hot issue that's uh, climbing up the charts on the uh, Key Collector app. And it's the first comic book appearance of Snake Eyes, who has a hit new film that everyone's loving. Everyone's saying it's just the greatest thing ever. Um, the, anyway, so this is uh, that's uh, Snake Eyes there that he's holding in a friendly uh, headlock. And uh, <laughs> I like this nurse tied up. Anyway, this is Snake Eyes' first comic book appearance. So, just thought I'd show you that. It's, oh, sorry, it's G.I. Joe number 35. Snake Eyes' first appearance. So make sure you uh, speculate on that one. Ladies and gentlemen, let's look for other key issues. G.I. Combat, G.I. Joe. Yeah. In all seriousness, I wish they'd make a haunted tank TV show or movie. That would be so great. Um, this is my oldest GI Combat issue one oh nine. Let's see what people are saying. Zombo says, yeah, if, what the hell? Yeah, if uh, Milton never did a documentary or something, he could be his own narrator. Absolutely. Um, that's a great looking comic and uh, looks a bit like Mickey Rooney from Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yeah. Yeah. So speculate on that. Um, Oh, this is an important key issue. It's uh, when Popeye, it's the Popeye cross appearance in uh, Green Lantern. Um, so um, it's, um, it's a real hot issue. Yeah, let's 
Spike Boo back. Son of a motherfucking bitch. Yes, Green Lantern meets Popeye. Popeye also met Superman, but this issue is more sought after. It's issue 23. Green Lantern meets Popeye. 23 point. Um, um, what else? Oh, here's the first issue of Hot Stuff. I'm Hot Stuff. Who are you? I got this ridiculously cheap. I, I, I don't even think it was $10, $15 on eBay years ago. And, uh, oh, oh, and Amazon Prime uh, also announced, uh, I think last month, that they're doing a, a, a series, a live action series starring the man the creature feared. So the man the creature feared, that's the man that the creature feared there, right? He's going to have his own TV series. They're saying, look, the strange alien is retreating. Strange alien. Yes, from the only person he fears, the mysterious man with the bandaged face. Not negative man, not the unknown soldier, not dark man, not the invisible man, but the man the creature feared. So you can expect that soon. Kevin Smith is directing. And uh, I believe that... Uh, He's going to be played by Bill Finkelstein. He was uh, a clone of Tom Cruise. They, they cloned him last summer in the Scientology building. They made a clone of Tom Cruise. His name is Bill Finkelstein. Uh, let's see what people are saying here. Very nice hot stuff comic. Meyer says, first appearance of full disclosure. Yeah. Um, wouldn't it be terrible if Joe Biden was under the the uh, wrapping? Um, now, this is important because uh, it's the first appearance of Hunter Biden. You see Hunter Biden there? He's on one of his crack binges, and he's menacing the poor heap and the red-haired girl, who will not be a red-haired girl in the TV show they're making of this, because Hollywood does not allow red-haired women or men. So she will be played by an Eskimo. Um, here's another hot stuff. It's an early, it's a 10 cent issue. It's number 14. The earlier you go back, the bigger hot stuff's head is. So you need the, the head should be about the size of the whole body, and then you know you've got a really cool event. Of course, the ten cent price tag uh, kind of gives it away too. Let's see, his head is enormous. I'm sorry, we we're just talking about Hunter Biden. I've seen that fucking idiot. <laughs> Before the election, when that uh, laptop broke, and what was that website that everyone was on? And then they they knocked it off the internet. What was it called? Uh, um, everybody was on it because they were censoring everything else, and then the big tech companies got rid of it. But they were they had all these videos from Hunter Biden's laptop on there, and it's like I've seen. Way too much of that guy naked. Speaking of uh, heads, oh my gosh! But the media did a great job of covering all that up. Wow. Um, this is a great cover here. Wish the world could still be like this, where, uh, but unfortunately, we're 
we're in a country at war and most people don't even know we're at war and there are people taking over the planet and we've got the most corrupt administration in history and uh, they're right in bed with people trying to take over the planet and nope yeah thank you zombo was parlor see i'm having one of those joe biden moments he says parlor and Meyer says, in olden times, if you're going to get a cartoon tattoo, hot stuff was very popular among service members. Yes, and truck stop waitresses, too. <laughs> now it's probably what's popular now with the, uh, I bet it's the, the Punisher skull or Venom. I bet those are popular with the young guys that have just enlisted in the Army because there's so many uh, uh uh, I don't know, squadrons or whatever you'd call them uh, in the army or whatever, Marines that use the Punisher skull. And then last, I remember th that was one of the things they were going after. They said, the Punisher skull is an evil symbol of the right wing. And they were, <laughs> the, I'm, so I'm, I, I, I don't know, does Marvel currently publish a Punisher comic? Because with their social justice warrior uh, leanings, it seems like that would be a comic they would be embarrassed by publishing. There's a pizza place near us. It's an Italian restaurant called Sal Joe's. And the guy that runs it, I think he's not really Italian. I think he's from Armenia or something. But it's the best Italian food. And he's so cool. And he's like this old rockabilly record collector. But anyway, uh, the whole restaurant is decked out in guns and big flags with the Punisher symbol and signed by every guy in some Marine unit and pictures from World War II and uniforms hanging and Civil War swords and pictures of Robert E. Lee. It just, <laughs> any, any, uh, uh, any uh, supporter of Joe Biden, if they went into this restaurant, they would burst into flames like instantly, like looking back at, you know, lots, you know, lots wife looking back. I got to show you yesterday, uh, Biden yesterday. How can I find it? Um, hold on. I'll find it. Uh, Cause I saved it. Uh, it should be in my history here. I'll just share, share the screen again, share the screen. I am so damn hungry, but at least I got a little money to eat today which was not the case yesterday. I had breakfast and I went to Jack in the Box. I, they still, you know, even with the inflation, even in this horrible world, you can still get two tacos, weird Jack in the Box tacos for a dollar and a junior bacon cheeseburger for like a dollar or something. So I spent about $3 and got less than $3 and got um, uh, a breakfast. And that was right about the time I was contacting... Uh, uh, Milton Knight yesterday morning. Let's see. Uh, more M's. I meant M and M's. Basil Orloff. I wiped my butt. Uh oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was talking. Of, he said that several times lately. Let me look at my history. Am I sharing yet? No. Hold on. Share. Share screen. Share screen. Chrome tab. And then click on go to Orloff YouTube. That's how many times I've got to click to do this. Okay, so we're into, oh, I'm up to 273 subscribers. That's cool. A couple of people have just subscribed, and it's really neat. Um, uh, and they've been talking to me, too. It's really an honor. Uh, okay, library. That's what I need to go to. Let's see. I don't want to embarrass myself because you'll, you'll see what I've been looking at. Oh, I've been listening. I was watching a lot of Howler Mouse this morning. He's really cool out of Virginia, I think he is. Um, yeah, that's the, the Howler Mouse is 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 one of the original gangsters of comic book uh, the comic book YouTube community. He does a video about about that. He's been doing it like ten years. I mean, Captain Strange Life started it all, but but he's one of the original guys, and so. Um, um anyway so um paulo goes on his show shows a lot so yeah it's hard being an og comic book youtuber og stands for original gangster so he's like shaft or super or superfly um 
Let's see. What have I been watching? I was watching uh, the this about the Suicide Squad this morning, yesterday. Oh, this is the one I wanted to show you. Watch this. Tell the snowflakes, but I made a search engine that actually supports your values. I'm a conservative <laughs> my entire life, and I noticed that Google and other search engines always pander to whatever special interest. I actually want to watch this commercial. Things, and they'll put it all over their homepage, and they'll influence their rankings based on it. And there's a lot of evidence that um, 2016, 2020 had some interesting search results occur for people. And I wanted to say, you know what? A search engine is just a tool that people use to find the truth. And I want to make sure that people can find freedom and all the things that they deserve to find instead of finding uh, whatever information, big media, big tech, and Hollywood. Yeah, but I don't know if I can trust you so. either, just because you sound friendly. How do you do that? What rap rip drop? What the hell did you say? I wonder what people are saying down below because I, I can't even imitate that. Brush rock we brought. Let's see what people are saying down below. Oh, he, he said my butt's been wiped. My butt's been wiped. Apparently he's not able to wipe his own butt anymore. My butt be wiped. <laughs> Everyone's saying that. Oh, is that what you were talking about? Oh, yes, that's what Basil's saying. Basil's like, uh, really, he already knows before I played it. I wipe, I wipe, I bought, I wipe, I bought. Yeah, you know, <laughs> the children. Uh, let's find that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be, it is funny, but it would be a lot funnier if it wasn't our country being taken over. Uh, can do though. What they can do is try to change the narrative and say, "Well, why wasn't Nancy Pelosi prepared? Why weren't the Democrats prepared?" Oh, no, they can that say that, and you can make honest judgments about it. I have look. I sometimes get myself in trouble for what I'm about to say. Not that I ever get in trouble. <laughs> As you've heard me say before, no one ever doubts I mean what I say. The problem is I sometimes say all that I mean. And, uh, but all what aside, a card. I have faith in the American people. <laughs> I really do to ultimately get to the right place. And by the way, many times Republicans are in the right place. Really? I don't mean that the Republicans, it's only a Democratic point of view. Uh -huh. But some of the stuff, I mean, QAnon, the idea that the Democrats or the Biden is hiding people and sucking the blood of children and do no, I'm serious. That's now you may not like me and that's your right. Yeah. Look, it's a simple thing. You, you can walk out and say, I just don't like the way that guy wears his tie. I'm voting against him. You have a right to do that. It is crooked. You have a right to do that. But the kinds of things that are being said of late, I think you're beginning to see, some of the and both and by democrats as well sort of the venom get sort of sort of leak out democrats are saying mean things yeah it's not blood it's adrenochrome see how that's how he, he thinks he's still telling the truth but there was another time he was talking about it while he's about to get on a plane but i can't find i don't find care that. hold if on if you think i'm safe oh yeah, <laughs> he says, I, I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. Instead of saying Satan incarnate, 
to reincarnate it. I don't care if you think I'm Satan reincarnated. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let me go back through my history. Must it be a what must be what? What must be what? What must be what? <laughs> my butt's been wiped. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, my butt's been wiped. My butt's been wiped. My butt's been wiped. <laughs> okay, let's go back some. Let's see. What have I been watching? Uh, yeah, this guy, Media Mix Comics, shows old uh, comics. That's cool. Um, I haven't watched this yet. What? I didn't mean to do that. That's an interview with uh, Milton Knight that I was watching that's done uh, by the guy that wrote the book on Cracked. But I didn't mean to press that. Let's see. Um, hmm. Let's see. I was watching Liar's video. Shit. I'm accidentally pressing things and it takes me to the top of the whole uh, list. Maybe I shouldn't be using my, the uh, that touch screen because then I touch a video and it starts playing. Oh, but it's so easy to do. Um... Oh, boy. I'm on. Shit, this is driving me crazy. Where is it? Was it? I haven't watched him talk about blood since Saturday? Really? And that's the wrestling stuff I was looking at. Well, oh, this is what we're looking at Saturday night during the last broadcast. Um, and that's what I was looking at Saturday afternoon. <sighs> oh, we're supposed to be looking at... Uh, uh, comics that you can speculate on. I'm letting down all those speculators. Uh, let's see. This is all that Six Flags stuff I was playing Saturday morning. I wonder how far, how far back this goes. Okay, we're well now we're back on Friday. Boy, I'm starving. Uh, what? Well, I thought I was on Friday. Oh yeah, Friday night we were looking at uh, William Randolph Hearst Mansion. And the one that he bought for Marion Davies, his girlfriend. And we were looking at all these old car ads. Remember that when, when my friend Gerald was over, we tend to look at more car stuff. Yeah, this is like, you know, replaying my life. Let's see. Oh, boy. 
Okay, this might be about where... I'm very persistent. I want to find that other time he talked about drinking blood. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That may be the end. Oh, that's as far back as they go. It's Friday. Oh, shit. Well, maybe I put it in one of my playlists. Your channel. Oh, okay. Playlist. I only have four people watching right now. Everyone's gone away. Uh, they just couldn't hang. How often do you get to watch some, look through their, uh, their recently viewed videos on YouTube and talk about being hungry? Doesn't happen every day. Well, yeah, I guess it does on this channel. Let's see. I would have probably put it in Yowza 12. This is what I'm stashing things now. This is my current stash of videos. Is it still July? The government shall pass no laws or make no regulations. <sighs> what is going on with my internet? I'm about to eat cat food, man. You think I'm kidding. Shitty thing, get me a copyright strike. Um, Basil says a total sap to deflect from the crap the commies are pulling off. Yes, Basil. Lead paint says, Hey, girls, that's how he always introduces himself. He? All right, well, I can't find it, but trust me, he denied drinking blood another time. It was dark, he was getting on a plane. If I could, if you guys find the link, let me know. I'm letting down. Everybody, let me see. No, hopefully no one's given me a, a thumbs down yet. Um, let's look at the show. See how many thumbs up I've gotten. Oh, there it is. Let's see. I got two thumbs up. Where is that there H? Oh, yeah, there's... I can't let's even see. read. I got two thumbs up. Where's the H? Oh, yeah, there's... <laughs> I can't even read. Two thumbs up. Where's the oh, H? I just... I gave myself a thumbs yeah, up. I think I'm up to H now. That's excellent. Oh, I just... I gave myself a thumbs up. I think I'm up to H. That's excellent. Oh, I just... I gave myself a thumbs up. I think I'm up to H. That's Yeah, eight thumbs up and no thumbs down. That's great. Wow. Incredible. Okay, let's look at some more comic books, shall we? Um, oh, here's some House of Mystery. Yeah, Hulu is doing a House of Mystery show. Um, did you hear about that? And the, fir the first episode is going to have this uh, this uh, android appear. It's the very first segment. There. Oh, that's actually House of Secrets. Never mind. First episode is going to have this devil baby. 
looks like uh, Frankenberry. It's the birth of Frankenberry. Frankenberry and Count Chocula had a baby, and that's um, uh, Franken Chocula. Franken uh, Chocuberry. <laughs> Chocuberry. That sounds very uh, illegal. That's how I felt last night. I had a headache just like that. And it caused little creatures to appear above my head. Bernie Wrightson, a true genius. I like how you can see right through the logo there. Hmm. If you go back far enough into the 60s, House of Mystery had Dial H for Hero. See that one on the... See, that's, that's COVID there. He's beating up the micro monsters. Did I mention I'm hungry? Oh, yeah, that's a cool issue. Yeah, I was... Uh, my oldest brother... No, my second oldest brother told me that in the 60s, he uh, had every issue of Dial H for Hero. And he said that was like, he was really proud of that. Of course, he didn't have them anymore. And I was never... Comics were never handed down to me from my older brothers. But so then... In the late 70s, when Lone Star Comics opened, I, I tried to get as many Dial H for Heroes, and I realized it was actually not a comic called Dial H for Heroes in House of Mystery. And I tried to get as many as I could to try to recreate what should have been my legacy, what I should have been my rightful um, inheritance. <laughs> I should have gotten those Dial H for Heroes, but they probably were tossed out in one of the many moves um, because, you know, we he, he would have been buying these. We would have been living in San Antonio, and then we moved to Germany, and then we moved to another place in Germany, then we moved to Virginia, then we moved to San Antonio, and then we moved to Washington State, and then we moved to Gratuville. And so I imagine it didn't survive one of those moves. There's the go-go checks that... Dr. Silver Age talks about all the time, which were designed so that when a comic book, let's say you've got comics on the rack like so, you know, you'd be in a 7-Eleven and you would pull up, oh, that's a DC comic. So you don't even have to, that's all you have to see is the go-go checks to see that. And, uh, that was their plan. Stick it to the man. Stick it to Stan the man. Hey, we're a DC comic. We're... Oh, yeah. Oh, the Martian Manhunter. You know, he was at the end of the director's cut. <laughs> so, what the fuck was it called? Justice League? They... <laughs> They, they took, he, that idiot director took this scene between Lois and Clark Kent's mom and, uh, and he s s decided, well, I'll, I'll, I'll have this, this poignant moment between them because Clark Kent is dead, Superman's dead, and they're, they're, they're meeting together for tea or something. And then I don't remember if Lois Lane or Ma Kent walks out of the room and all of a sudden they turn into the Martian Manhunter. What a fucking idiot. And if you ever do not, if you ever doubt he's a fucking idiot, watch that Land of the Dead movie. I couldn't get 15 minutes into that piece of shit. Um, this is Hot Stuff number 66. His head is getting to be a little smaller in the 60s. 60s numbering.
you know it's that Toys R Us time of year. The world's biggest toy store is Toys R Us. You know, and they have the greatest selection at Toys R Us. It's that Toys R Us time of year. You know, it's uh, Toys R Us is our new sponsor here on the Grouchy Warlock channel. That and Bubble Up. This is not a full bottle because I drank it. Um, oh, I was supposed to, I was going to do something for Captain Strange Life. He's seeking out Kickapoo Joy Juice. Um, and uh, I was trying to see where locations are for a store called Rocket Fizz. I figure there's got to be one in Chicago. Wouldn't you think so? It's a pretty major city. How many people? We've got seven people watching. Wow. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, so Rocket Fizz, I call it Rocket Piss, but Rocket Fizz is where um, I went to buy all those drinks I got the other week. Okay, so it's a place like this. I filmed in there, and I filmed a really good video in there, but YouTube wouldn't let me load it because as soon as I walked in, they were playing a Beatles song, and so that is forbidden. Oh, man, they're all over the place. Let's see, locations. So you type in Chicago, search by city, find locations. Oh, is that Chicago? I have no idea what. Oh, Chicago's over here. I didn't know Chicago was on a. <laughs> I didn't even know Chicago was on a lake. I'm like a fucking idiot. Um, let's see. B -b -bum. So there's, they're kind of close. I don't know. One is in, uh, that one looks like it's the closest. Schaumburg, Illinois. Um, yeah, so it's in a mall, the Woodfield Mall. So I don't know how far that is. Let's see. Let's direction. Oh, we'll look at directions. Because he was looking up, like ordering it from Amazon, which probably would have been it would be easier. Let's see. Oh, it's forty-two minute drive to get Kickapoo Joy Juice. I don't know about that. Probably just ordered from Amazon. But it sounded expensive. He was talking about it in somewhere. I think in his last video, or 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 he came on one of my live streams and said that it probably is what it was okay so they got them there uh rocket fizz anyone else want to see if there's a rocket fizz near you let's see what people are saying in the chat huff house art says just purchased the only copy of flippity flop 19 on ebay a real rarity one a real ratty one i'm sorry i thought it said rarity um did you really? <laughs> um, let's see. What was the one you said you got? 19. Let's see what I've got. I had some other ones. Ooh, look at this This one. This is a great... Oh, shit. i got to take that down. Um, uh, look at this. I love that logo. Foxhole. Why, why did they call him chicken? Mm -hmm. He doesn't look too chicken. Disabling a mine. Um, flippity and flop. Yeah, here's the one I showed you. Number seven, I believe. Yeah, they're going to be ratty because these are read by kids. These are not saved by collectors. Um, there's 24. I guess I don't have 19. Um, unbelievable accounts of bizarre sightings of UFOs and the men 
who fly them. They have men in quotation marks. It's a collector's edition, I'll have you know. It says so. When they say it's a collector's edition, it usually isn't. I don't know. Oh, here's cool. Here's um, Hanna Barbera Super TV Heroes. They should do a live action version of the Herculoids. You showed it earlier. I showed what earlier? 19? I have 19? I do? Really? I'll trust you. This is uh, Little Dot's Uncle's Working Day. Man. This is Harvey Hits number 24. Look at Uncle Caravan. Get Richie Rich, little lot of. Amazing portable radio works indefinitely. Complete, ready to operate, no batteries, no tubes. How do they do that? No longer than a regular pack of cigarettes. The new Lifetime Pocket Radio gives you interference-free reception. I don't know about that. You heard of these, Fer I think they call them Faraday cages that you put your phone in. It's because your phone um, tracks everywhere you go and uh, there's a little lot of... Um, so there's probably little things you can hide your, your phone in. So... Uh, People don't know everywhere you go and everything you say. I've heard you can also stick it in the microwave. I mean, not turn it on, but I hear that inside a microwave wrapped in, <laughs> in aluminum foil that uh, people can't ring your phone, that it keeps radio waves from getting in or out of your phone. Let's see. So this is Harvey Hits number 24. Here's Harvey Hits number. Oh, see, when you get older, trust me, it's real. <laughs> and they put, they have these purple covers, and then they got blue, and then you're supposed to read that number. Let's see if I can get it zoomed down. Damn. It's, does that say 50 or 30? Here's Hawk and the Dove. Well, they're already uh, on television in the Titans TV show. Except the Dove is now a girl. I guess that started in the comic a while back. <sighs> what else? Herbie is a great comic. Herbie the Fat Fury. Fifty says Meyer Greenblatt. You gotta trust me, this is one of the greatest things to come out of the 1960s. It's Herbie. Looks like the average comic book store uh, patron. Both of them. Kind of looks like Antifa a little bit, too. Looks like old uh, Cecil the Seasick Serpent is uh, not having a good day. Okay. 
is for our Canadian friends. Yeah, Herbie is great. It's just so weird, this relationship with his parents. And the fact that, like, John F. Kennedy seeks advice from him and <laughs> all the women fall in love with him. Yes, Herbie the Fat Fury. Oh, I have two copies of that issue, man. I think I have more Herbie that I just haven't. I've got a box over here, stuff I've got to file into. In fact, I need to look in there if there's anything I need to put between. What does this start with? F. And it goes. Here's High School Confidential Diary. Canteen Corner. You know, in the 50s and 60s, school dances, they would call them canteens. At least they would around here. Uh, or they'd also call them sock ops. But canteen is a word that held over from World War II, but they were still using it in the 50s and 60s as a word for dances. But people kind of forgotten about that. Oh, my gosh. What is my oldest Justice League comic? Number 16. See, I'm I'm really a lightweight as far as comic book collecting goes. I, I don't have a great collection. I mean, you guys are probably laughing. His oldest one is 16. That's ridiculous. I have five copies of number one. Shit. Here's my, my copy of 17. Looks like someone pissed on it, but it's still readable. See, I don't like the water. Can you even see that? I don't know if you can see that water damage. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like water damage on comics. I don't know. I showed you all this stuff before. I don't know. If, I don't know. There's a, I've got a couple of Jetsons comics. Let's see. Meyer says they use the term canteen in the Navy and also here at the VA. It's a small convenience store canteen. But yeah, but they used to. Uh, canteen was when they would have uh, in the Army, I think, when girls would come in and, and dance with them and. I think. Myra, I think you were showing uh, Joe Palooka a while back. This one, Cookie Monster, got a hold of it, took a bite out of it. Or maybe you just took a, you know, you talk about taking a bite out of crime. They took a bite out of Joe. Joe Palooka. John Steele, secret agent. Uh, this one's for Jambo. Here's a copy of Jumbo. Oh, it's got a little tear on it. They tear, tore off where it tells you what no issue number it is. Wish I had more of these Fiction House comics. This is a good cover. I always like that outfit there on uh, Leopard Girl. Um, Leopard Girl is uh, has been optioned by the uh, by United Artists for a feature film, so that's uh, you need to speculate on Leopard Girl. Um, as far as Golden Age, Joe Palooka is an affordable title to collect. Yeah, that's why it's in my collection. Um, yeah, it kind of has to be affordable to be in my collection. I'm not a big bucks kind of guy. Whew. Ay, ay, ay. There's... Uh, 
my oldest issue of the Hulk as the Hulk. I mean, obviously, I've got him in Tales to Astonish. This, one. this box is exclusively Silver Age here. I need to get more Silver Age Hulk. Oh, I've got two copies of uh, Hulk fighting the Glob. After the heap, there was the Glob, and then later there was Man Thing and Swamp Thing. I always like this cover, 133. That's, a, that's how you do a cover. You can see Marie Severin's influence in that. Seven viewers. The weight of 1971. Oh, it's got Kang. It's, this probably actually, I'm joking about all this key issue speculation stuff. I, I think you can see my sarcasm, but this actually may have gone up in value because Kang is um, um, going to be the new big baddie in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, One thirty-seven. So what issue did they start? Um, this is one thirty-three. And this okay. So they were doing the logo like that, right? And then when they moved to this, and they kept that logo all through the seventies, and that's the the logo they had. You know, when Wolverine first appeared in Hulk one eighty. 180. Yeah, I'm I'm one of those assholes that say that the Wolverine first appeared in 180 because I have 180 and I don't have 181. But everybody wants the first appearance to be 181 because it looks really good on your comic book wall because Wolverine is on the cover and it's such a striking, wonderful cover. So people have altered reality and made it. Hulk, uh, Wolverine's first appearance is 181 because that's the one that just looks good slabbed because a lot of people don't read comics anymore. They just have them slabbed and they just want to see the cover up on a wall. Anyway, who cares? I didn't buy 180. It was bought for me by my mother because I had a fever or something and she, was, she always would buy me a comic when I was homesick. Shit. I've got a box over here that I I need to go through and I've got all this stuff on top of it. It's so discouraging. All right. It is 2.13 p.m. and the p.m. in the afternoon here on Monday. I just blew up an inflatable heart-shaped pool in the backyard and an inflatable... Uh, chair for relaxing um my wife ordered them um last avenger 85 180 the true first appearance thank you yes because that's the one i own <laughs> as i just said my 180 has rusty staples rusty staples would be a really cool name for a youtube person Someone ought to go on, as if someone's probably already done it. Uh, rusty Staples. This is an important first appearance of uh, the commander. This this issue of Nick Fury. Remember that one? Uh, yeah, I've got to move these Super 8 films. Ah, uh, food. 
there's a fanzine, a Warren Magazine fanzine called Spooky. Let's see. Slab them all. Slab them all, put them on the wall and hang one. All and, and hang them one and all. Put them on the wall and hang them. Not all oh well. You really need to turn that into a song. Or is that a song? I don't even know. Um, yeah. Anyway, someone put out a little digest size fanzine for uh, Warren. There's a company that puts out a, a magazine that's supposed to look like the old Creepy. And it's called, I think, The Creeps or something. And then they put out a magazine that's supposed to look like Vampirella. And they call it Vampirus Carmilla. I've seen some issues of The Creeps, I think, at Barnes & Noble. But I've never seen either of those titles in a comic store because the comic stores I guess I go to figure they won't sell and I think the market they're making those magazines for is me someone that remembers those magazines when I was a kid but I remember flipping through the creeps and saying well it kind of sort of looks like creepy but it isn't creepy, and it doesn't have the ads in the back, and it's not 1972 anymore, and and I and it was like probably almost ten dollars or something, and I just didn't get it. And sometimes you just can't go back home again, and so it's real hard to rebottle that. What's the cliche? That lightning? Or just it's just not the 60s or early 70s anymore. Uh, but maybe they're cool, um, but apparently there's been some, I know James Warren was ill, and uh, somehow while he was ill, the rights to Vampirella and Creepy and everything went to Harris Comics or something, and he was real pissed and wanted the rights back once he got better. I don't know exactly the, the whole legal story, but... Um, Apparently, someone's someone with some clout has complained, and uh, now they're changing that magazine, The Creeps, to Shudder, and they've got a first issue coming out, uh, and it's called Shudder now, and they've done a cover that looks kind of like the cover to Creepy Number One, the yellow cover where Uncle Creepy is reading to some monsters. Um, oh yeah, someone's telling me that in the in the chat. Let's see, Man Bear Pig, yeah, new magazine starting this fall. Like that called Shutter might be repl yeah it's replacing Creeps. Creeps is changing its name after the last issue thirty two. I think it's been a Shutter magazine. But you know, I, and when and when I own every issue of Creepy, then I'll I'll buy the Creeps or Shutter. But it's a spin of a Cox Barter song, singing about blasting commies. Oh oh okay. That's a song that probably uh, inappropriate to play on 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 YouTube. I'm assuming. <laughs> Okay, I'll look that up. It sounded like it was already a song to me. Uh, okay, so I'm I'm taking stuff off of a comic box that I know has a bunch of comics in it that need to be filed into these boxes. So I'm gradually doing that. Here's the little booklet for the Texas Pinball Festival 2015. I used to go to this every year. Then they moved it like way far away from me where I have to get on these toll roads to get there. And I don't like toll roads. And uh, but you'd go there, and they would all these pinball machines, like this huge. People would bring their pinball machines. They put them on free play, and you could um, play them. You know, you just so it's like if you went to a car show, and they had the keys in the ignition, and you could drive the car around the block, and then come back and park it. It's kind of like that. All these vintage pinball machines from the 1940s to yesterday. And you could play all of them and without spending any quarters. Of course, you have to pay to get in. And then they'd have panel show, you know, talks by the artists that drew the back glass for the machines or people from different companies. And it was uh, it was fun. And then they also have some arcade games mixed in, too. But it's a fun thing. And last year they canceled it. And, well, I think last year and this Two years in a row, it was canceled because of this uh, this uh, 
bioweapon attack from the CCP. So uh, anyway, so maybe it'll come back next year. If you don't have to show your papers to get in. Let's see. Movie World says hello, Gratu. And uh, Vampirus Carmilla, cool too. I just, I've never seen Vampirus Carmilla in the person. I, uh, yeah, yeah, what the fuck is that old Spanish land grant shiz with them till roads F? Oh, yeah, F that. Yeah, it's like, it's some weird thing. Like, I hadn't gone to Dallas in a bunch of years, and I went back to Dallas, and every road that I used to drive on was suddenly a toll road. In the old days, they'd build a road, and they'd make it a toll road to pay for it. And then once the road had been paid for, they took the toll booths out. And um, that's the way it was until, um, yeah, because I-30, I remember when they took the toll booths out, they, they paid for the road and they were honest. But now roads suddenly get, for some reason, bought up by companies out of out of Europe or something. And then you're, you're paying to drive on the road. I don't know how that happens. Um uh, pre-existing roads you've driven on for decades suddenly are toll roads and now you don't have to go to a you don't go to a little booth and give them coins now they take your picture the picture of your car and send you a bill sometimes months later i don't like that show you have a little tag that tells that you're okay and pretty soon that tag will tell whether or not you've had your um thing Probably won't be able to drive on the highway without that. All right. Here's Josie and the Pussycats. We've got some, uh, some, uh, some television programs. Uh, Josie and the Pussycats. And we got Pebbles and Bam Bam, Bam, Bam and stuff. Um, all that kind of stuff. Let's see what else it says. Uh, I ride a bicycle. Yeah, you can't really do that around Dallas. That's why I try to avoid Dallas. Meyer, if you're still here, I just watched the first episode of Korg, 70,000 BC. Private companies will buy them and make them toll roads, take over maintenance, etc. Is that what they do? Is that how that works? Oh, yeah, that's fucked up because you can't go anywhere in Dallas without getting on a toll road. So I try to avoid them. I'll drive. I'll drive. 30 minutes out of my way to avoid getting on a toll road. <sighs> I'm clearing it gradually. Shiza, hold on a moment. <clears throat> Hey, is there anyone that I don't like this guy that I'm about to show you. I, I'm not a fan of the Smiths or Morrissey, although sometimes I'll hear him interviewed and I like his sarcasm and the fact that he hates everything. That's okay. But anyway, years ago, um, this old girlfriend or someone I thought was a girlfriend was really into Morrissey. So she, she wanted me to paint Morrissey as like a saint or something. So, so I did this painting, and, and I'd kind of like to get rid of it. And I don't want to just throw it in the trash. And uh, if anyone wants it or would like to pay a few bucks for it, I, I know I showed it before. Man Bear Pig says, well, if you paint a hockey mask over his face and make him Jason, I'll, I'll, I'll be a but my wife said, no, you did such a good job of capturing his likeness. You shouldn't do that. So I was going to do that. And she said, no. So anyway, if anyone wants or has a girlfriend that likes Morrissey, because it's really more, the Smiths are more kind of a, I don't know, guys like the Smiths. I guess they're okay. But anyway, um, this is painted by me many years ago, probably in the um, long time ago. 
probably a little sacrilegious, honestly. So I'll probably get struck by lightning showing this to you. But anyway, yeah, I mean, I guess that does kind of look like him a little bit. So anyway, maybe I take it to a record show or something. But if you're into Morrissey, no, no offense if you're into Morrissey. It's, I'm not a very good salesman. If you like this shit, if you're stupid enough to like Morrissey, why don't you give me a few dollars? And I'll, you know, it's like, what kind of a salesman am I? It's like, hey, you know that Morrissey is really great. <laughs> Let me see uh, what people are having to say here. Uh, uh, what did you think of Korg, uh, 70,000 BC? Lead paint says... It can be very common in Illinois, especially the Chicago area. Man Bear Pig says, I still haven't gotten the <clears throat> work the entire time I've been exposed to it. I feel like shit once or twice, but otherwise, fine. Right there. Yeah. Luckily, I'm no longer teaching because that, uh, that I see that coming. Seems like they want the, the M's back, too. So aggravating. Yeah. Meyer, it was great. Do you know of any other live action shows produced by Hanna Barbera? Is it watercolor? No, it's acrylic. Uh, off, offer stands for Jesus, Jason. Yeah, yeah I know. I just, uh, my wife is telling me not to do that because it's like sacrilege to the art, you know, because um, Hanna Barbera live action. I, I, mainly, mainly it was Filmation that did that. I don't know. Did Hanna Barbera do any other live action besides that? That same year, there was a bunch of dinosaur caveman shows. There was Valley of the Dinosaurs, Land of the Lost, and Korg 90,000 BC. I think that all was the same year, about 74. I know a bunch of peeps would want that. I'll tell my roommate tonight to see if I can whip up a few. Whip you. Yeah, that would be great because that, that would get me out of a lot of trouble. It's like, you're not making enough money at that comic store. <laughs> I'm really not. And, and But, you know, in my retirement, I was I just, uh, anyway, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. No other than Banana Splits, Danger Island. Yeah, the Banana Splits was uh, live action. Well, it kind of, they had wraparound segments with the Banana Splits. But it was Hanna-Barbera that made it, but the suits they wore, the costume, the, the banana split stuff, that was Sid and Marty Croft, I'm pretty sure. So that was Sid and Marty Croft creating outfits. It was filmed by Hanna-Barbera. It's very, And then the cartoons that the banana split showed were really boring Hanna-Barbera type cartoons, as I recall, like the Three Musketeers or Danger Island or something. Um, but though the thing about the banana splits, they filmed it at, uh, Six Flags Over Texas. So you get to see a lot of the rides that they pulled out. I really can't think of any others, nor can I, I forgot about banana splits. Yeah. Yeah. Someone made a slasher movie about the banana splits about, I, I noticed it in Target where they're like horrible killers or something. I just thought. Uh, of course they would. You know, someone's girlfriend said, oh, those look kind of creepy. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> Utah sandstorm causes 20 car pile up, killing several motorists. That sounds terrible. Um, and uh, a new subscriber named Scott Briggs is uh, all excited because uh, he he must have just subscribed and he was watching uh, which video is this? Three fifteen. Oh yeah, let's go look at that. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's he's watched. He must have been looking up the comics journal, and he saw one of my old videos, three fifteen. When my wife wakes up, I may need to bow out, guys, but she's still asleep, um, because. Uh, 
the other night, you know, I was trying to get off Saturday night and uh, it was, and I could hear her slamming doors downstairs. It's like, I, I, I really shouldn't do five hour streams, you know, while she's downstairs lonely because that didn't work too well. I was trying to get off, but anyway, this is uh, episode 315, Remembering the Comics Journal and Fact Sheet 5. I've had 168 views four months ago. How about that? Four, brought to After Dark. Yes, it's Saturday night, March. I stop, I've stopped using yes, puppets. i got to bring them back. Sinks inexorably into the western horizon it is once again time for brought to after dark yes it's saturday night march 6 2021 and once again in color from the grant to Orlop international building of train room one floor seven i am oscar the magical trash elf the magical trash goblin you grew up with me and now that you are an old person oscar is going to introduce you to another foul smelling piece of trash brought to Orlov. yes it is once again brought to Orlov after dark march 6 2021 I'm using a ring light. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> My wife purchased it uh, a few years ago. She'll be starting a, a YouTube channel soon. Sooner rather than later. But for right now, you're stuck with me going through more shit that I've discovered in these boxes here. What will we find today? Oh, this looks like a mixed bag or mixed box, shall we say. Let's see what we've got here. Hmm. From September of eight, 1986. Which CD player is the best? This is when CD players were brand new inventions. How about that? Well, there's an old TV guide in here. What's the story on this? It's Chico and the Man, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see what year this is from. Let's look at Saturday morning first. Okay, well, okay. I, I came here to look oh, at... Uh, March 13th, 1976. Oh, this isn't even... Uh, this is from uh, Tacoma, Washington, or Seattle. This is before we'd moved. So, uh, 7 o'clock, Saturday morning. You have your choice of Hong Kong Fui, Emergency Plus 4, And, uh, anyway, I am. Um, I found the TV guide from the week my wife was born. She was born in uh, May of 1978, and so I found the television show that was on television in 1978. And I know the exact time she was born from her birth certificate, so I know what show I was watching when my wife was born, and it was. Uh, it was Laverne and Shirley. It was the it was the, the first five minutes of Laverne and Shirley. They just had the opening credits, and then they had commercials, and they just come back from the commercials. That's about when she was born, on that Tuesday night in May of uh, seventy eight. So, I'm pretty sure in seventy eight I would have been still watching Laverne and Shirley. I'm pretty sure. Could be, could be wrong, but anyway. So uh, what I wanted to do is look at the the comments down below. Because this new guy just, uh, he says, um, fact sheet five, this is 18 hours ago. Fact sheet, fact sheet five eventually reviewed our, our long, our now long forgotten 
what does LI mean? Long Island based the new music scene fanzine around 1991 or so. Took a while for them to review us though. I was a fanzine publisher on my own for years since 1983 or so, having gotten into Lovecraft and weird fiction around then and did my own private EOD. What does EOD mean? Zine, the Arkham Advertiser till I retired the title in the later 1990s. I was writing for the Crypt, the Crypt of Cthulhu by 1983 or so when I started, when I was still in junior high school. It was weird being published at such, such a tender age. Crypt started as a private EOD zine and then quickly grew to a semi-pro and then pro type fanzine mag that was selling at bookstores, etc. Same with Necronomicon Press, which I hooked up with later. Friends of mine published the new music scene from on, uh, I don't know what LI means. I'm thinking Long Island, I don't know. From about 1989 to 1995 or so, it was kind of short-lived. We did get some good interviews sometimes, including two of us having met the likes of XTC at Record World, and then hanging out with John Wesley Harding and Poi Dog Pondering, the band at the Ritz and other places at the time. I published a review of their second album in the magazine New Route, or New Root, whatever, which was distributed professionally at Tower Records, etc. I don't recall seeing Fact Sheet 5 until at least 1990 or so at Tower, but I guess it had been around a bit before that. Before that, I only knew zines from the horror, fantasy, and SF worlds, for the most part, or stuff I would see at Forbidden Planet in New York City when it was still also a huge bookstore. I penned a ton of music reviews and concert reviews for New Music Scene, as well as for my new NYIT college paper, The Campus Slate, which much of which is now lost forever, I suppose. YouTube is great, but it's no substitute for fanzines and actual publications or books, just as movies are no substitute for reading actual history books. I just watched A Bridge Too Far, and I wished I'd just read the book, honestly, but I digress. And he said some other stuff. This is four months ago. Oh, here's Captain Strange Life. Can't, curious Pete rears his whittle head. Those news magazines, distributor catalogs, fan magazines, and small press publications are such interesting and important, important items. I can't understate their significance in the preservation of our comics and pop culture history. I just love reading them. And there's Tom Smith. Fact Sheet 5 was a fascinating zine. I'm really surprised to see you do a video about it. I really like the fact that you do videos about magazines, books, and comics that not many others mention. Makes your channel very interesting to me. Eric Breen says, Carolina trouncing Duke is cool. Even cooler is getting a mention from the great Dr. Gratu Orloff. Uh, oh, here's more from Scott Briggs. Let's see what, he, what Tom Smith was saying. Your story about sick being hard to find is so interesting to me because I've heard similar things from others. I'm 43 years old, so I never saw sick on the newsstands in person like I did mad or crack. So many people, so many people have said that sick is very hard to find in the wild, and indeed, I've never seen many issues for sale in used bookstores or comic stores, just the occasional one. It makes me really proud to have acquired through persistence when ordering online from the U.S. to Canada was still affordable, a complete collection of the entire run of 134 issues and most of the specials. I have a feeling that not many people out there besides myself have a full run of sick. Okay, this is the new guy. And he says, P.S. I used to buy and read the comics journal fairly regularly in the later 80s and 1990s. Would usually find it at bookstores or magazine stores in New York City or at Tower Records, if I recall correctly. One of the better magazines on comics and graphic novels with a critical slant that wasn't just aimed at kids by any means. I later briefly worked at Starlock Magazine and Comic Scene, which sucked, frankly. And let's put it this way, the comics journal was safe from that competition, a much superior publication. And then I say, it was great. Um, and then he says, apropos of nothing, do you by any chance recall some of the more horror SF comics of the early to mid 1970s that would show up sometimes? I recall being greatly disturbed by some of these titles, don't know if they were Marvel or DC, probably Marvel in some cases. One of them had the story of some spaceship guys 
being, uh, being beset by these giant eyeballs in space. And eventually the freaking eyeballs would absorb the guys. It was icky. I don't know how some of these comics got published. There were, they were, these were much more disturbing than the run of the mill comics coming out then. I never saw Tales from the Crypt creepy or eerie as a kid, having been too young. And then I say, that sounds like a Basil Wolf. <laughs> I put Wolverine story. Let me fix that. What a moron. Basil Wolverine. <laughs> That's a good name. We've got two cool names, Rusty Staples and Basil Wolverine. That sounds like a Basil Wolverton story I remember. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> Basil Wolverine. What a, anyway, I can't even recall the titles of the comics anymore, alas. Then there was one where the cover illustration was of some kid cruelly pinning butterflies in his butterfly collection, and some giant bug is about to come in and get him. Some really beautiful cruelty. I don't know if Marvel put that stuff out or what, but even in the 70s, they got away with some crazy stuff. Of course, I was a huge Famous Monsters, Monster Times, and Star Warp mag fan from 75 onwards or so. Um, and then uh, I pegged it. The Eye of Doom by Basil Wolverton, of course. The cover and art shows up on Google or Yahoo search. Good Lord, didn't know what that, what comic it was for, though. It was from the 50s. And then uh, he says, I further read Marvel was reprinting tons of Golden Age stuff by the early 70s. Weird Wonder Tales was the comic that had the Wolverton story, I recall. 1973 was the issue date, which about squared with when I saw it. Maybe 1975. I think someone traded it with me or gave it to me. I had no idea those stories dated from the 50s, though. I also recall one cover with a giant robot menacing the world, reminiscent of the famous Queen album cover for News of the World. And then I said, the butterfly cover is for is House of Mystery 222 from February of 1974. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. I, I definitely own that issue. Totally creepy stuff. The good thing, at least about the lot about the later 70s, the 80s with comics was you could finally put out adult comics and graphic novels and film adaptations like the Blade Runner comic book and market it and get away with it. Although it appears Europe was a whole other universe, but most of the true adult comics were really intended for adults after all in late teens. Metal Hurlant, etc. Unlike the whole mid-50s comic scare and all that absurd nonsense. But it also seems like Marvel and some other publishers in the 70s loved to be subversive and put out comics and covers just to freak people out and sell issues. Anyway, Scott Briggs doesn't really have a channel or at least anything on it. So he's got eight subscribers. I probably should now subscribe just, and I'll even ring the bell and maybe he'll put some stuff up soon. Cause he sure certainly sounds like he knows his stuff. I'll show you that house of mystery he's talking about. I didn't know that Marvel had reprinted that I story. Um, I, um, someone's had it slabbed. <laughs> Fucking morons. Um, yeah. This is the cover he's talking about. The this the spirit of butterfly death is menacing this kid. Oh well, House of Mystery two twenty two. Yeah, I bought it bought it off the spinner rack in a Seven Eleven or wherever I bought it. Um, what was I going to look up? Oh, Eyes of Doom, Basil Wolverton. That's a Wolverine. That's a good one. Um, bu, bu, bu. This is what he's talking about. The Eye of Doom. There's the whole story. But he says it was reprinted in Weird Wonder Tales, and maybe... Let's take a look. Weird... Wonder Tales, Eye of Doom. Oh, yeah. Weird Wonder Tales number one, Marvel 73. We looked everywhere. Who cares? Shit. That you looked everywhere. Uh, who 
go to hipcomic.com. Oh, someone is, yeah, I, oh, okay, it's this issue. All right. That's, that's the one to look for. Of course, I don't have that particular issue, and I'm telling you all to look for it. So now, oh, this is from the Withville Collection. That's a pretty famous uh, collection, uh, that town rural retreat where I really wanted to move, where that hotel was, is right next to Withville. That's the kind of the bigger town next to it. And there's a one owner high grade Withville collection in Southern Virginia, pretty uh, pretty famous. Um, anyway, let me get back to real life. Oh, Scott Briggs is watching. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. Let me see what everybody's been saying. Hey, Gra2D. It's Wolfman Jack. Okay, we already read all that. Well, nice comment. And then Scott Briggs, sorry, I'm here. Sorry for essay comment. Es for the essay comment? What? Oh, I am in Long Island, New York, and I've and have been since birth, lived in New York City for years later on. Yeah, I didn't I I figured out LI meant Long Island. I used to buy crack religiously in the 70s. I like Comic Buyer's Guide, too. That's cool, Scott. That I, I later really got into Underground Comics for a while. I had no idea you were watching. I was just saying, I, there's a cool new subscriber that I was talking to. I was in the bathtub, soaking in the bathtub, and I had to search what, because I know I have that house of mystery with that cover, and I, I, I had to search. I didn't just have it in my mind. Oh, that's issue 222. I'm not like that. I'm not that, but I was able to look up. I knew it was House of Mystery, and I found out. Actually, what I did is I went to mycomicshop.com and scrolled because I knew it was like 74, 75, and found it was 222. I was buying House of Mystery religiously at that time. I forgot Wolverton was a big mad guy also, of course. Yeah, I can't believe I wrote Wolverine. I'm glad I went back and fixed that before I just looked like a total idiot for... Uh, um, all time, or until YouTube gets shut down, which probably soon. Uh, you know, they're saying that there's probably going to be like right before the the next election, they're probably going to just shut the internet down because you know Obama put in an internet kill switch, and they asked, "Why did you do that, uh, President Obama?" He says, "Well, in case there's ever a a SARS or a uh, bird flu epidemic, we might need to take over all the web pages and direct them all to a central location." So they've been planning this for a while, and and people are thinking that that and now they're saying you know, Russia's been doing a lot of interference with the internet. They've been doing all kinds of hacking. And then they'll say, but it wasn't the Russian government. No, because we're scared of the Russian government. We don't want to get. We're, it's people in Russia, but it wasn't the Russian government. And, and remember when he was scrambling, the president was like. Oh, uh, he was talking to some lady in an ice cream shop. And she says, why is Russia doing that to us? Well, well, well I have some notes here. Uh, it wasn't the Russian government. We aren't thinking that. It was some people in Russia. Anyway, so well, they'll blame it on Russia, people in Russia. But what they're going to they're gonna do something horrible. So I wouldn't be surprised if everything goes down. So I'm trying, I try to record all my episodes. Because who knows, YouTube could be shut down. The whole internet They'll do something to distract us from the election, you figure. They'll do something horrible, some horrible thing, false flag thing. Anyway, uh, let's see what else people are saying. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what. Maybe you're working on putting up con content <laughs> shows. I call them shows. Um, it's like... Uh, my mom would have frowned on it. I, I'm, I'm not following the conversation here. Oh, the underground comics probably. Um, you frowned on the underground comics. The um, My mind is going to, I'm starting to short circuit. Steam is coming out of my ears. Movie World says, Scott, you sound like you'd be very interesting to watch. You ever start making videos. That's, that's what I was just saying. Yeah, right, Movie World. Movie World Comics, thanks. I used to write a lot of stuff in the HPL and weird fiction worlds, essays, etc., but not much writing right now. I had a friend that was, a, I think, really big in the HP Lovecraft community. He passed away a couple of years ago, a guy named Gavin Smith in uh, Irving, Texas. I don't know if you knew him. 
but I know several people. I know this other guy named Forrest that has just about it. Every weird tales, HP Lovecraft appearance. He's, he's not into comics. He's into collecting vintage books and pulps. Um, this popped in. I need, I meant to introduce myself better. And I think someone gave me those comics, some older kids or whatever. Yeah. Famous sponsors was my Bible as a kid. <laughs> Remember 1984 magazine? I used to strong on my parents to buy it for me. Did they know what was in it? Because that one was pretty extreme. Oh, yes, Gavin Smith. I met him once, I think. Yeah, he's, he was a nice guy. Uh, uh, he, he passed away, but he was really into H.P. Lovecraft. And and, uh, um, and so I don't know. I'm pretty sure he was well-known in that community somewhat. Well, I found some comics. Uh Oh, hey, the snow. Yeah, because some of the covers look pretty tame. That was a great cover that Corbin did. There was a girl with a sledgehammer, and she was standing on top of a big mountain of dead robots that she'd crushed. And there was the Lost in Space robot and Robbie the robot. But you open up the magazine, it was like really perverse. It was, you know, what they did in Creepy Eerie Vampirella, amped up to. 11 i mean they, with the nudity and it was just non-stop nudity it was uh it was uh somewhere between warren magazines and hustler almost uh did you know sam gafford he was a good friend but he no i didn't know sam gafford uh i I just know a few people that are like really tuned in to hp lovecraft uh, that community um, let, let me uh, look up that cover that I was telling you about. It was 1984, and then as as we got closer to 1984, they changed it to 1994, but I think that might have been a lawsuit from the George Orwell estate, either that or because they kept that copyright active because that TV show Big Brother, at the end they have an acknowledgement to the Orwell estate or something like that because it's still owned. But I, it's, they changed it in 1994 because if that magazine had kept publishing, it would have eventually been kind of dated. Okay, so let's see. I'll look this up. Oh, I got to share my screen. Um, Sam was also a massive comics nut. Yeah, I don't know, but maybe someone um, that watches knows of him. Sam Gafford. Um, okay, I want to. Share screens, share, share screen, share screen. They got to make it on StreamYard where it's easier to share your screen because it's just too many damn clicks. It gives you a carpal tunnel. Okay, so what was I looking up? Um, 1984 Warren Magazines. This is the magazine we're talking about. It's up. Uh, um, but see, I'm on Bing uh, and, and Google. I hate Google. Google is the enemy, but they do have a better image search. 84. Um, Warren. I, I loved Richard Corbin's art. I, he's just one of the greatest. But um, uh, that magazine just overdid it. And they were trying to be heavy metal. That really looks like a heavy metal cover there. But inside, and that does too. But they just went too far. This is issue, This is the first issue. Um, someone, look at that Richard Corbin art. Oh, that's so great. He was a genius. But, um, oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm on a different page. You're not even seeing what I'm doing. Um, okay. I remember this cover, this girl strapped to Jeff Bezos' uh, spaceship. It was probably after it became 1994 that they had that cover that I'm talking about. With the, Oh, there it is. Yeah, 1994. It's a great cover. Oh, this is my comic. That's issue. Yeah, let's just go to my comic shop. That's where I should have gone because they have good image scans. 1980. I wonder what people are buying this for they had a 1984 there was uh, 29 issues okay 
James Warren's answer to the successful debut of Heavy Metal Magazine. 1984 features adult-oriented and oftentimes downright sleazy stories and art. Yeah. The name change to 1994 occurred with issue number 11, supposedly so newsstand browsers didn't confuse the magazine with George Orwell's famous novel. They had really good art. Wally Wood, uh, Alfredo Acala, Richard Corbin. It was just it just it pushed the limits a little too far. Let's see, 78. How old was it? Uh, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old, so I shouldn't have been reading this, but yeah, I was. I guess I was buying. I, I don't know if I have that issue. I don't. The covers do look very heavy metal like. Um, I think I have that issue. And, um, that's when it changed to 1994. Um, I, was it in this that they had the Rex Havoc stories that were kind of like Indiana Jones? And then when Indiana, when I think they published them and they cleaned it up a little bit and put out a special edition where they put more clothing on people. I don't, I don't really remember. It's kind of like these Netflix type shows that they add in stuff that's completely inappropriate just because it's on a streaming channel. Yeah. Anyway, she, She's got, the, this would be some great artwork to have framed. She, yeah, she's got the sledgehammer and she's broken Robbie the robot's uh, head open and she's hit Gort all these times. <laughs> she beat up R2-D2. And there's the Lost in Space robot, the Westworld guy. <laughs> she's uh, punched up uh, one of the boobs off of the Metropolis robot. Yeah, Richard Corbin was a genius. I have that issue somewhere. It's just the insides of this magazine. You just got to trust me. It, I'm probably making it sound appealing, but it just it pushed it a little too far, at least from my 12, 13, 14-year-old mind. I thought they went too far. Okay, let's see what people are saying over here. Um... I got tight. Scott says, I got tight into the New England HP Lovecraft Mafia for years. Sam was an early member. I fondly recall the series Herma about the hot revived Viking chick. And, and uh, um, there was uh, um, Frank Thorne that did Red Sonia, had a character like Red Sonia, but didn't wear clothes, basically. Um, is there a big HP Lovecraft community on YouTube? Because I, I haven't sought that out, but it sounds like it would be interesting. Corbin was fantastic. I've never seen anything like it before. The first story I read was the color creepy story about the pet pink tentacle creature. Yeah, and then they had this one story called Click Lick or something like that that was unbelievable. I, I wonder if I could find that, something like that. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, oh, it's called the Slipped Mickey. Yeah, let me pull that up. Oh, it was Gita of it was called Gita of Alazar. Was the uh, Frank Thorne series? Okay, we have fourteen people watching. Earlier, I didn't have this many people watching. On Friday, I'm going to have a guest on. Uh, it's uh, Mort Todd. Let me see if I've heard back from Mort Todd. Because maybe it would be cool if he'd replied, but um, he said that on July 17th, he said, let's do it after next week, moving into a new place and setting up my studio. I have to catch him a lot of work. Whatever time works best for you, I can probably cope with. And he said, right, cool, I'll get back with you during the last week of July. Moving's a real pain, but then... Um, I, I, so he's probably busy. He hasn't looked at his messages yet. So, but anyway, um, the person coming on Friday is Milton Knight, the great animator and artist. Um, uh, 
that'll be a four o'clock Friday, four o'clock central. Um, oh, and Scott says, uh, there is some HPL community online, but HPL's reputation seems to have taken a beating. Oh, okay, yeah, I've heard about that. The story was called Bowser, I think. Yeah, I remember that. That was in, they, they reprinted that in color in like Comics Illustrated. I think they had a color comic that Warren put out that was all color and it was on kind of nicer paper. Um, yeah, it was called Bowser. I'll look that up here in a second. Um, yeah, uh, the, I think the current thing is because uh, everything H.P. Lovecraft wrote to his friends, all these letters has been collected. And I think people are say he was very xenophobic. He, he did not like people in other countries too much. So um, that is um, what I understand. I keep hoping they'll do an Elric Michael Moorcock, Moor, Moorcock movie. Yeah. Um, I stumble because these are names I've read for decades. And that's probably the first time in my life I've said Michael Moorcock out loud. <laughs> it sounds a little bad to say that out loud. But, uh, but you know, all these names that you read, but you never say aloud because you're never talking to other people that are actually into the stuff you're into. Um, Movie World says Milton Knight is going to be on the Grudge Roller Show. Great. I can't wait for it. Yeah, for Friday, 4 o'clock. So. Um, let me share. Yeah, I, I, uh, I was talking about that earlier, but not as many people were watching. Yeah, there was this one. Uh, let's see if they uh, show this. It was called the Slipped Mickey. Oh, this is very nice. Let's see, Richard Corton. It was uh, Doug Minch. Moench. Uh, everyone has trouble pronouncing that name. Doug Munch. I heard Howler Mouse earlier this morning. I was I was listening to Howler Mouse, and I don't think does anyone really know definitively how to pronounce the name. Is it Munch? Anyway, I can pronounce Richard Corbin, but this is a really twisted story. But look, look at how he draws Uncle Creepy. It's so great. Um, anyway, let's get to. The, But it's just, uh, what a great artist. Look at the shading. He did this stuff with airbrush. And uh, I've just never seen anything like it. And then when they reprinted the spirit stories in the 70s, when Warren did a, a, a spirit magazine, they reprinted the stories from the 40s. But Richard Corbin came in and did shading. I don't think uh, Will Eisner liked it. But I sure did. I, I thought it would look. It made the art look amazing in black and white, because the spirit stories were meant to be seen in color in the Sunday uh, paper. But yeah, the story gets really twisted. Butterflies ripped out my eye. Howard, what is it? The blood? What happened? This is really horrifying because part of what makes it so horrifying is that the art is so whimsical and cartoonish. And, uh, <laughs> and then this, so you could see Nugent and reel back in revulsion at the abrupt explosion of your beloved wife's stomach and the revolting spill of corrupt maggots and tangle slimed worms. Oh my God, no, come to me, Howard, come and let me hug you. And then he goes running with the blood coming down from his eye that's been eaten by butterflies. And... Oh, then, uh, then this crazy train comes along. And crushes his skull. And then uh, this... Uh, she reminds me of, uh, what's her name on Three's Company? Joyce DeWitt. And 
and uh, of course the TV bites your head off. Okay, then the TV is going after the dog. So the dog gets the heck out of Dodge. Pulls a bone off of a corpse and buries it. Yeah, this stuff was pretty twisted. Of course, that 1984, 1994 magazine pushed it much farther into perversity. Look at this bone grabbing the dog and pulling the dog under. Unbelievable. It says, so I warn you, jerkos, you'd better not flip this page. I mean it. If you know what's good for you, don't flip this page. And imagine owning the original art to this page. I knew you wouldn't be able to resist. <laughs> anyway, so. So, yeah, that's Richard Corbin. He's one of my favorite artists right up there with Marie Severin. And this is from issue number Creepy 54, July 73. And the one that, um, was it Bowser? Creepy Corbin. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, this is what Meyer was talking about. Another Richard Corbin story. This uh, kid has this pet creature. There's a great story called by Richard Matheson, and it's called, uh, uh, what is it called? Um, More Human Than Human, or is, is that, no, it's not called that. It's called, uh, I think it's called that. So, wait, I got to look up what that story is called. I think I'm giving you a, a completely wrong title. Um, ba -ba -ba. No, it's called, uh, it's not called that. That's a completely different thing I'm thinking of. It's called, um, dang, what is that called? Oh, here it has puppies. I might have skipped the page. Uh, what is that Richard Matheson story? Oh, um, so, uh, what was it called? Oh. Uh, Um, born of man and woman yeah that's a great it's just two, two uh, born of man woman Richard Matheson Probably on, yeah, here it is on, uh, here it is. What's what people are saying here? The Corbin series den was really bizarre, creepy. I think they have the den movie by Corbin here on YouTube. Yeah, he did he did one, and then of course it was also adapted for the heavy metal uh, animated movie. Lead paint cool. That was more of a heavy metal series, I think. 
Oh, my wife is here. But you want to mention the cereal you asked about is called Fruit Root. Okay. I need to go. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'll, re I'll read this story to you. But I need to go talk with my wife real quick because she just woke up, obviously, because she's commenting. And I heard the door downstairs. So let me go. That's, that's it. Fruit Root. When were we talking about Fruit Root? I must have skipped some stuff. Or was it on another episode? I might have a box of fruit root around here somewhere. Oh, they're bringing back uh, the cereals uh, this the Halloween, but they look just very close to the 70s boxes. Um, that was a box of fruit root. Like, I just saw it. Here's some lucky charms. Um, see, Scott Briggs never heard of that cereal. I, I do recall Kaboom, though. I've got a box of Kaboom. Let me come right back, and I'll, I'll be right back.
All right. Let's see what people are saying here. Is the Monster Serial family? Yeah. Now they spell it fruits was not to call them a fruit, I guess. No, I don't think it's that. Maybe it is. I think it's because there's no actual real fruit in the cereal. So if they spell it F-R-U-T-A... They can't be uh, held accountable. Not to be confused with Heart Brute. I don't think they ever remade Fruit Brute. At least not in my area. They did a few years ago. Because that's how I have the box. I don't have an original Fruit Brute box. It spells, it says F-R-U-T-E. It's around here somewhere. I'll find it instantly when I finish broadcasting. It's a shame Fruit Brute would be perfect for the alphabet people to co-op. I wonder if they read Godzilla cereal in Japan. Probably. They had Godzilla everything in Japan. Literally, almost. Um, never go to this place. They have cool looking cups. It's called Taco Casa. You ever heard of this place? This is... Uh, maybe it's only around in here, around this area. Um, wretched. Horrible. But I saved the cup because it looked cool. All right. So, Richard Matheson wrote this uh, short story. Richard Matheson, you know him from The Outer Limits and from creating Kolchak and uh, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, the Twilight Zone episode, right? Richard Matheson, one of the great horror writers. But uh, um, when I used to, uh, I'm a, well, let's see, see, Meyer says, uh, I hope I like the colors of the cup, though. I, I used to read this story with my students, and uh, I think, uh, and then then I'd have them create posters, you know, like to, you know. Anyway, it's a cool story. I'll uh, I'll read it to you. Born of Man and Woman by Richard Matheson. X. This day, when it had light. Mother called me wretch. You wretch, she, she said. I saw it in her I saw in her eyes the anger. I wonder what it is, a wretch. This day it had water falling from upstairs. It fell all around. I saw that. The ground of the back I watched from the little window. The ground it sucked up the water like thirsty lips. It drank too much and it got sick and runny brown. I didn't like it. Mother is a pretty, I know, in my, pl in my bed place with cold walls around. I have a paper things that was behind the furnace. It says on it, screen stars. I see in the pictures faces like of mother and father. Father says they are pretty, once he said it. And also mother, he said, Mother so pretty and me decent enough. Look at you, he said, and didn't have the nice face. I touched his arm and said, it is all right, father. He shook and pulled away where I couldn't reach. Today, mother let me off the chain a little so I could look out the little window. That's how I saw the water falling from upstairs. And with the story, you can teach point of view. This is a first-person point of view of, of this creature that lives in a basement that's never been outside the basement, so doesn't know the word for rain, and uh, and uh, but but it's actually very intelligent, even though he doesn't know punctuation because he's never been to school. He's able to use metaphor and all that, so. Um, and also, he, he's, he's dating this first part. It's a diary, X, then XX. 
this day it had goldness in the upstairs. As I know, when I looked at it, my eyes hurt. After I look at it, the cellar is red. I think this was church. They leave the upstairs. The big machine swallows them and rolls out past and is gone. In the back part is the little mother. She is much smaller than me. I can see out the little window all I like. Okay, so he knows they're going off to church. Big machine is a car, right? The little mother is his sister, but he's never met his little sister. He's down in the basement, kept the secret, and he, it looks like a little mother. See, it's so great how this is written. In this day, when it got dark, I had eaten my food and some bugs. I hear laughs upstairs. I like to know why there are laughs for. I took the chain from the wall and wrapped it around me. I walked squish to the stairs. They creak when I walk on them. My legs slip on them because I don't walk on stairs. My feet stick to the wood. I went up and opened a door. It was a white place, white as white jewels that come from upstairs sometime. I went in and stood quiet. Hear the laughing some more. I walked to the sound and looked through to the people, more people than I thought was. I thought I should laugh with them. Mother came out and pushed the door in. It hit me and hurt. I fell back on the smooth floor and the chain made noise. I cried. She made a hissing noise into her and put her hand on her mouth. Her eyes got big. She looked at me. I heard father call. What fell, he called. She said, a iron board. Come help pick it up, she said. He came and, saw, and said, now is that so heavy you need? He saw me and grew big. The anger grew in his eyes. He hit me. I spilled some of the drip on the floor from one arm. It was not nice. It made ugly green on the floor. So your ne your, your ne the monster is never described. This is from the point of view of a monster. But, but through reading carefully, your mind imagines what this monster looks like. So the reason I had the students draw posters from this story after they read it is every person would have a different idea of what the monster looked like. But clearly the monster doesn't have legs. It slithers. It sticks to the stairs. Well, actually it does say it has legs. My legs slip on them because I don't walk on stairs. So uh, there aren't legs that, that walk, that are able to walk. Um, anyway. So as you read, pay attention to details of what the monster looked like and, and how you would draw this if you were given that as an assignment. So anyway, I hate to stop when I read this one. Okay. Anyway, so he's got green blood. Father told me to go to the cellar. I had to go. The light had hurt some now in my eyes. It was not so like that in the cellar. Father tied my legs and arms up. He put me on my bed. Upstairs I heard laughing. While I was quiet, there looking on a black spider that was swinging down to me. I thought what Father said. Oh God, he said, and only eight. X, X, X. This day Father hid in the chain again before it had light. I have to try, pull it out again. He said I was bad to come upstairs. He said, never do that again or he would beat me hard. That hurts. I hurt. I slept the day and rested my head against the cold wall. I thought of the white place upstairs. X, 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 X. I got the chain from the wall out. Mother was upstairs. I heard little laughs very high. I looked out the window. I saw all little people like little mother and little fathers too. They are pretty. They, they were making nice noise and jumping around the ground. Their legs was moving hard. They are like mother and father. Mother says all right people look like they do. One of the little fathers saw me. He pointed at the window. I let go and slid down the wall in the dark. Okay, so he's sliding down the wall. I curled up and they would not see. I heard their talks by the window and foots running. Upstairs there was a door hitting. I heard the little mother call upstairs. I heard heavy steps and I rushed in my bed place. I hit the chain in the wall and I lay down on my front. I heard my mother come down. Have you been at the window? She said. I heard the anger. Stay away from the window. You have pulled the chain out again. She took the stick and hit me with it. I didn't cry. I can't do that. But the drip ran all over the bed. She saw it and twisted away and made a noise. 
Oh my God, my God, she said, why have you done this to me? I heard the stick go bounce on the stone floor. She ran upstairs. I slept the day. X, 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 X. This day it had water again. When mother was upstairs, I heard the little one come slow down the steps. I hated myself in the coal bin, for mother would have anger if the little mother saw me. She had a li little live thing with her. It walked on the arms and had pointy ears. She said things to it. It was all right, except the live thing smelled me. It ran up the coal and looked down at me. The hair stood up. In the throat, it made an angry noise. I hissed, but it jumped on me. I didn't want to hurt it. I got fear because it bit me harder than the rat does. I hurt, and the little mother screamed. I grabbed the live thing tight. It made sounds I never heard. I pushed it all together. It was lumpy and red on the black coal. I hid there when mother called. I was afraid of the stick. She left. I crept over the coal with the thing. I hid it under my pillow and rested on it. I put the chain on the wall again. So he's killed a dog, put it, uh, crushed it into a ball, and hid it under his pillow. X. This is another times. Father chained me tight. I hurt because he beat me. This time I hit the stick out of his hands and made noise. He went away and his face was white. He ran out of my bed place and locked the door. I am not so glad. All day it is cold in here. The chain comes slow out of the wall. And I have a bad anger with mother and father. I will show them. I will do what I did that once. I will screech and laugh loud. I will run on the walls. Last I will hang head down by all my legs and laugh and drip green all over until they are sorry they didn't be nice to me. If they try to beat me again, I'll hurt them. I will. So he started over. X. This is another time. So he started over. There's like, okay, now things are changing. And uh, the next time they beat him, he's going to do what? Hang down from the ceiling and and he can run on the walls, and, you know. So it's, uh, you got to imagine, what does this guy look like? Let's take a look what other people might have imagined. The uh, story brings tears to my eyes. It's so great. I don't know, when I watch great movies and I read great books and stories, it, it kind of brings tears to my eyes. Um, let's see here. Um, Google. But then I got to run after this because I, I, my wife and I need to eat. Born of man. And, and, you know, what I imagine is like one of those old ugly stickers that uh, were drawn by um, Basil Wolverton and, you know, and Wood. Um, so... I just think that's a great little two-page story. Um, oh, let's look. It was actually uh, it was uh, written in July 1950 in the magazine of fantasy and science fiction. The story is written in the form of an internal diary in broken English, kept by what the reader presumes is a deformed child. Gender unspecified. That's true. You don't know if it's a boy or girl. Chained in the basement by its violently abusive parents. The story makes it clear that the man and woman who have imprisoned the child and its, are its biological parents when the child recalls the man commenting about how stark and how in stark contrast to the child, mother is so pretty and me decent looking enough. Anyway, it was selected in 1970 with the Science Fiction Writers of America. It's one of the best science fiction short stories published before the creation of the Nebula Awards. Well, let's see what that um, issue looks like. July 1950. July 1950. Magazine of Fantasy. Yeah, that magazine was published for years. There was I remember buying copies of that little digest size thing. Okay, images. Oh, I'm back on Bing. Shoot. I hate this. I asked for the July 1950. Um, uh, Google is better. Okay, what I need to do to force the internet to search for is um, put um, magazine of fantasy. 
Come on. Science. My arm is doing a lot better today. I really think that tennis ball helped. Um, okay. July. Was it July? Oh, shit. I can't remember. I'll put Matheson. And then I'll put born of man and woman. Not, maybe I'll. I just don't. I don't want. I want to see that particular cover. Okay. Oh, there's a. He had a collection of short stories, and that was the cover to it. Maybe is this? Oh, this must be it. Yeah, July 1950. So it has that little uh, robot reading like the yellow pages. It looks like. Uh, okay, so. Um, yeah, okay, so I'm just gonna look up images. See what uh, we get. There's a. Has anyone attempted to draw this guy, this this little creature? But anyway, what I I picture him looking like is uh, uh, ugly stickers, 1960s. That's what I picture he looks like. Is this guy? That, uh, you know, that's kind of what I imagine. Yeah, I mean, he calls them legs, but he clearly has more than two legs. And a lot of the kids would draw something that looks just like that. <laughs> these, these stickers are amazing. There's Ron, which they would print these with multiple names on them, say, you know, um, so that you could get one with your name or your friend's names and um, um, oh I always like that one doc there's old Fauci oh but you know there's a there's a really great show I think it's called mind webs on YouTube it's a science fiction show I think it was done in the 70s it's a radio show that's what it's called here's the yeah here's someone's got 11 12 hours of mind webs but i'm pretty sure they did an adaptation of born a man and woman um okay that it's it's in this episode writing's not that easy but Grammarly can help. This sentence is grammatically correct. This isn't the original Fruit Brute. This, this is of a, is one of the new part. ones, The Return yeah, of Fruit Brute. But they also had one where he actually First looked like all, he did in the 70s. One titled Happily Ever After, authored by William F. Nolan. It's from a collection he edited called a wilderness of stars. The author writes, I always wanted to try a simple variation on the Garden of Eden theme. Finally, I did. The result is short, direct, and I sincerely hope entertaining. On the way back to level 12 in the space camp, Donald Spencer couldn't right, resist. So it must be after this.
There we go. To ball it out again. He said I was bad to come upstairs. He said never do that again. It's Joe Biden. He would beat me hard. That hurts. I hurt. I slept the day and rested my head against the cold wall. I thought of the white place upstairs. I got the chain from the wall out. Mother was upstairs. I heard little laughs very high. I looked out. Hold on, I've got it, a vision. Um, hold on one moment. So, anyway, I've, I've got, no, I'll, one moment. Share screen, Chrome tab. I found the, the clip I was looking for earlier, I think. If I can get it to work. Come on. of the Republicans and Fox News changing their tune on the vaccine? Well, I, rather than be critical of it, I thank them for it. I think it's a matter of, uh, first of all, in truth, I don't know how many even believe what they were saying. They may have really believed it, what the, the things they've been saying. And uh, But I think once the realization occurred that this virus was only killing primarily those people who had not been vaccinated, I think it was sort of, as we Catholics say, a bit of an epiphany for them. You know, it was a, like, a, you know, conversion on the way to Damascus or something. But I think it became real. And I, uh, I'm, I'm glad they had the courage to say what they said. Uh, and hopefully it will have some impact. Oh, see, they cut it, those fucking scum. Because he later stuck, and said, you know, they think we drink blood. Oh, they cut that part off. Uh, morons. Okay, well, hold on. I got an idea. I'm just about to be brilliant. Biden speech. Remember when anything was possible? All right, we got it. Do pull it out again. Do pull it out. Father tied my legs and arms. She made a through to walk on me. I am. I can see out the little window all I like. In this day, the now for our second portion of the program. I do a story titled Born of Man and Woman. It's from the book Third from the Sun by Richard Matheson. This day when it had light, mother called me 
wretch. You wretch, she said. I saw in her eyes the anger. I wonder what it is, a wretch. This day it had water falling from upstairs. It fell all around. I saw that. The ground of the back I watched from the little window. The ground it sucked up the water like thirsty lips. It drank too much and it got sick and runny brown. I didn't like it. Mother is a pretty, I know, in my bed place with cold walls around. I have a paper thing that was behind the furnace. It says on it, screen stars. I see in the pictures faces like of mother and father. Father says they are pretty. Once he said it. And also, mother, he said, mother, so pretty, and me, decent enough. Look at you, he said, and didn't have the nice face. I touched his arm and said, it is all right, father. He shook and pulled away where I couldn't reach. Today, mother let me off the chain a little so I could look out the little window. That's how I saw the water falling from upstairs. This day it had goldness in the upstairs. As I know when I looked at it, my eyes hurt. After I look at it, the cellar is red. I think this was church. Hey, leave the upstairs. The big machine swallows them and rolls out past and is gone. In the back part is the little mother. She is much small than me, I am. I can see out the little window all I like. In this day when it got dark, I had eat my food and some bugs. I hear laughs upstairs. I like to know why there are laughs for. I took the chain from the wall and wrapped it around me. I walked squish to the stairs. They creak when I walk on them. My legs slip on them because I don't walk on stairs. My feet stick to the wood. I went up and opened the door. It was a white place. White as white jewels that come from upstairs sometime. I went in and stood quiet. I hear the laughing some more. I walk to the sound and look through to the people. More people than I thought was. I thought I should laugh with them. Mother came out and pushed the door in. It hit me and hurt. I fell back on the smooth floor and the chain made noise. I cried. She made a hissing noise into her and put her hand on her mouth. Her eyes got big. She looked at me. I heard father call. What fell, he called. She said, a hey, iron board. Come help pick it up, she said. He came and said, now, is that so heavy you need 
he saw me and grew big. The anger came in his eyes. He hit me. I spilled some of the drip on the floor from one arm. It was not nice. It made ugly green on the floor. Father told me to go to the cellar. I had to go. The light, it hurt some now in my eyes. It is not so like that in the cellar. Father tied my legs and arms up. He put me on my bed. Upstairs, I heard laughing while I was quiet there looking on a black spider that was swinging down to me. I thought what father said, oh God, he said, and only ate. <laughs> This day, father hit in the chain again before it had light. I have to try to pull it out again. He said I was bad to come upstairs. He said never do that again, or he would beat me hard. That hurts. I hurt. I slept the day and rested my head against the cold wall. I thought of the white place upstairs. I got the chain from the wall out. Mother was upstairs. I heard little laughs very high. I looked out the window. I saw all little people like their little mother and little fathers, too. They are pretty. <laughs> they were making nice noise and jumping around the ground. Their legs was moving hard. They are like mother and father. Mother says all right people look like they do. One of the little fathers saw me. He pointed at the window. I let go and slid down the wall in the dark. I curled up as they would not see. I heard their talks by the window and foots running. Upstairs, there was a door hitting. I heard the little mother call upstairs. I heard heavy steps and I rushed in my bed place. I hit the chain in the wall and lay down on my front. I heard mother come down. down. Have you been at the window? She said. I heard the anger come down. Stay away from the window. You have pulled the chain out again. She took the stick and hit me with it. I didn't cry. I can't do that. But the drip ran all over the bed. She saw it and twisted away and made a noise. Oh, my God, my God, she said. Why have you done this to me? I heard the stick go bounce on the stone floor. She ran upstairs. I slept the day. <laughs> this day it had water again. When mother was upstairs, I heard the little one come slow down the steps. I hid myself in the coal bin, for mother would have anger if the little mother saw me. She had a little live thing with her. It walked on the arms and had pointy ears. She said things to it. 
It was all right, except the live thing smelled me. It ran up the coal and looked down at me. The hairs stood up in the throat. It made an angry <laughs> noise. I hissed, but it jumped on me. I didn't want to hurt it. I got fear because it bit me harder than the rat does. I hurt, and the little mother screamed. I grabbed the live thing tight. It made sounds I never heard. I pushed it all together. It was all lumpy and red on the black coal. I hid there when mother called. I was afraid of the stick. She laughed. I crept over the coal with the thing. I hid it under my pillow and rested on it. I put the chain in the wall again. This is another times. Father chained me tight. I hurt because he beat me. This time I hit the stick out of his hands and made noise. He went away and his face was white. He ran out of my bed place and locked the door. I am not so glad all day it is cold in here. The chain comes slow out of the wall. And I have a bad anger with mother and father. I will show them I will do what I did that once. I will screech and laugh loud. I will run on the walls. Last, I will hang head down by all my legs and laugh and drip green all over until they are sorry they didn't be nice to me. If they try to beat me again, I'll hurt them. I will. Now, um, one thing you can do, I gotta, I gotta go because we gotta eat. But uh, um, that was an interesting experiment. Um, hold on, I got another idea. Hold on, hold on. Just a second. Then I gotta go. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, Biden. You know, they've invented subtitles, you know, closed captioning, but they always have the virtue signal by having this little moronic person doing the little. I already got a thumbs down. I guess someone doesn't like uh, making fun of. Uh, Politics. I get that thumbs down every episode. Okay. Hold on. But now, now we will put away our hatred. Now we will put down our weapons. We have passed through the night of the fires. And those who were our masters are now our servants. And we, who are not human, can afford to be humane. Come on. 
So, cast out your vengeance. Tonight, we have seen the birth of the planet of the apes. <laughs> Oh, anyway. Doo, doo, doo. Oops. Apes uh, sure have some cinematic staying power. Well, that's not what I meant to do. Oh, I wanted to tell you also when you're... Um, let, me, let me open this up again. Um, Mind Webs is a great show. That's recent. I guess that's from the 70s or 80s. But um, there's some classic 1950s radio shows towards the end of the era of old radio. Um and they're they're really acted out really well, and and uh, they have Ray Bradbury stories, and it's all from around the time period of EC science fiction. So I got to share this real quick for you, just in case you don't know about uh, this stuff. Yeah, I can't believe I got a thumbs down. Why would that guy do that to me? Do, do, do. Okay, so Dimension X from 1950. It's like, here's a playlist with like a whole bunch of like 50 of them. They're really cool. Adventures in. It's all on YouTube, you know, everything's on YouTube. Time and space told in future tense. The match on that. There's Dimension X. This guy's got 11, uh, over 11 hours of Dimension I'm X sorry, episodes. Is this. Looks so crisp and refreshing. It's Mike's. Mike who? Oh. Michael. Yeah. So, something to sleep to. But there's Dimension X, and the other one is called X-1. And I think one was a sequel to the other one. Adventures. X-1 is the other one. Um, it's really cool too. So you know when, and then like the adaptation of Mars is Heaven, which was later in uh, the Martian Chronicles. There's a lot of Ray Bradbury and cool um, early science fiction stuff in here. But countdown for blast off. X minus five, minus four. Minus three, minus two, X minus one, fire. From the far horizons of the unknown come tales of new dimensions in time and space. These are stories of the future, adventures in which you'll live in a million could be years on a thousand maybe worlds. The National Broadcasting Company presents X. Minus, 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 minus one. So trust me on that. So when they were writing those EC science fiction stories, they had heard all these shows. And as far as the EC horror comics, um, you need to look up. Oh, I, I need to get downstairs. Inner Sanctum was a really great radio show. Inner Sanctum Mysteries. They even did a parody of Inner Sanctum in the EC Harvey Kurtzman Mad. Inner Sanctum, look that up. Also look up Suspense. Oh, it started with a creaking door. Hello. Hello. Uh, oh. And the host oh, there you was are. very much like an EC horror host. Why, you almost scared me the same death. guy that did Inner Sanctum later did the CBS the Radio Mystery Theater in the 70s, and they kept the creaking you door. You? There's also suspense. I'm your host on behalf of the makers of Carter's Pills, and you ought to be my yeah, guest. Carter's they deliver pills. Suspense is another radio show, show that's really cool. Come in, sir. As far as you like EC horror. The Columbia Network takes pleasure in bringing you Suspense. 
when you listen to the old radio shows, you realize that CBS is the Columbia Broadcasting System. NBC is the National Broadcasting Suspense. Company. They always tell you in old shows, but there's the a really old one. I think it's from like the excitement. 30s called the, the Witch's, series, Witch's to Tale, and that uh, and that one is the most close to EC. It's just like the pages of best-selling novels from it's the theater a, of Broadway in London. Then I got it right. Zillow 360, you can buy, sell, and finance. That's Zillow 360. Uh, wonderful. Oh, come on. Oh. And there was lights out also, yeah. The fascination of the ER. Lights out is the one Bill Cosby did that routine about that creature that ate Detroit or whatever. They're waiting, waiting for you now. So I've given you hundreds of hours of programming that you can enjoy in those old radio shows. And there's tons of old goggles and just, you know, The Shadow and Superman. And Anyway, i got to run. So I'll be seeing you in the broadcast. Come back Friday for, uh, uh, for Milton Knight.